Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is CJ and I thought for today I would respond to the prompt of sad girl summer. I think a lot of us experienced a sad girl summer this year. Maybe you have perpetually experienced a sad girl summer if you are a sad girl. And I wanted to kind of curate a reading list by women authors who center around female narrators who are in some sort of emotional turmoil. This is obviously a very broad spectrum. I think a lot of other books could have been included in this roundup and I didn't include a lot just because I wanted to showcase some other books that I haven't talked about uh, specifically on my channel yet. This is a niche of literature I am very familiar with and have been drawn to from the very beginnings of my journey as a reader. I myself am a sad girl, I'm a former emo teen. I've always seeked out kind of dark spaces on the internet, hence Tumblr, MySpace, YouTube. I have always connected deeply with sad characters in books and other forms of media. So let's call this one last hurrah for the sad girl summer. Today is September 1st, so I think we have a couple more weeks of good weather coming up. Maybe maybe check one of these off your list if you get around to it. So let us begin my Sad Girl Summer curation. <laughs> All Grown Up by Jamie Attenberg. This follows a character named Andrea. She's a designer, a former artist. She is living in New York City and she doesn't know how to be an adult. I think that is a similar conundrum that many of us find ourselves in. I think this book is really successful at kind of unveiling that inner turmoil that comes along with aging and not knowing what the next step is for you and kind of having a vantage point of seeing other people play out their lives in similar or dissimilar passengers and holding them up to your own as a comparison. I really liked this book. I love the narrator. She's sharp and funny and witty and depressive. <laughs> Her most personal family relationships are really interesting and well developed in this story. There's some exploration of kind of your commitment and view to your family as you age which I think is really interesting and is definitely a part of adulthood that I have felt shifting uh, for myself over the last couple of years. I liked this book. It didn't feel whiny to me. It felt purposeful and and very authentic to the kind of searching that Andrea is seeking throughout the entirety of this book. Would recommend. Next up we have Exquisite Mariposa by Fiona Allison Duncan. This is a really strange novel slash memoir question mark. I just recently finished reading this and the specificity of the millennial neuroses in this book and what it feels to be a woman online and to have grown up in kind of this culture of the spectacle of being on the internet and commodifying yourself to be seen by others was really striking to me. It's definitely like a loopy kind of like borderlines on like weird trite um, metaphysical like woo-woo-ness at times but it is all kind of grounded by Yona, who is the, also the name of the main character in this book, hence why I said novel slash memoir. It's definitely depressive. I think it's hopeful and joyful at times too, but that baseline tonality of sadness is overarching throughout the entirety of the book. There's no really clear resolution or findings that we get out of this book on searching for what's real and what's not. It's a hard one to explain, but I think if you like my taste in books regularly and you identify as a very online person, you will like this book. Next up we have a collection of short stories called Tonight I'm Someone Else by Chelsea Hodson. I have candle wax on this book, so ignore that. <laughs> I loved this collection. It is quintessential sad girl goodness. It also takes place in Tucson, Arizona, so being from Arizona, I loved the immediacy and familiarity and clarity that she writes about concerning the desert. I think it's such a weird, surreal place for humans to live to begin with, but as she's exploring kind of 
sexual desires and trauma and kind of the height of her desire as a young woman. I think the desert as a landscape is the perfect backdrop to this. And I think about this collection a lot. There's some really weird codependent relationships in here. I feel like it's just a good example of a woman inhabiting her sexual desires and seeing if that leads to consequences sometimes, if that makes sense. If you like short stories, you like sad girls, you like the desert, give this a try. Next up we have The Idiot, which follows Celine, who is in her freshman year at Harvard. I loved this book. I think the Celine as a narrator is so funny and emotive and you really grasp the anxiety that she's facing as she moves through her college experience, but also her first love. I really related to this book. I think her friendships and her romantic relationships are, are really realistic and such a good time capsule of how your identity is shifting as you enter a college space and how that shifts even more as you form as a human being and get stronger connections to others outside of, you know, your immediate family and the town you were raised. A good coming of age novel, but there's a deeper underpinning to that. And I think the depressive, the depressive uh, undertones are strong, but palatable and like have a funny cutting edge. But Celine's a, a sad girl for sure. Next up, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. Carson McCullers is a legend. I think she wrote this at 23. <laughs> casual. And the heroine named Mick Kelly in this book is phenomenal. It's such a good time capsule depiction of kind of cultural tension that was happening in the south and the cusp of you know, what are some buddings of the feminist revolution and Mick Kelly kind of finding her way and navigating through ideas of beauty and what it feels like to be rejected. I think Mick Kelly was based on Carson McCullers. She wrote herself into this book essentially and it's great. If you haven't read any Carson McCullers, I would start here. I haven't read this since college, but again, I would highly recommend it if we're into the trope of a sad girl, which we are here. I'll tell You in Person by Chloe Caldwell. This is a collection of essays and it's kind of exposing Chloe Codwell's inner life for the ugly, weird mess that it is. It examines femininity in a really interesting way that I think operates on a couple of levels. There's kind of like a showing of the repulsiveness of what we do to fit into a weird gender binary at times. What some women do to fit into a gender binary it felt really relatable and like just funny to hear someone else say, say these weird secret rituals that a lot of us do but don't talk about out loud. I love this book. The tone is lonely and kind of introspective and it feels isolated at times and like her only companion is herself, but also very vulnerable and relatable at the same time. Definitely some sad undertones in here. We have Department of Speculation by Jenny Offal. I love Jenny Offal. This is a Jenny Offal stan account if you are new here. And this perspective of a wife recounting her marriage and the, f the fracture of that romantic relationship and kind of what it undoes in her is so good heartbreakingly vulnerable in all the right ways but also dry and funny and the form that this is told in is really interesting they're all kind of tiny chapters little vignettes and you can you know kind of dip in and dip out but it does follow one central storyline very lonely very lonely in kind of this domesticity partnership phase of I guess vantage point that this book is written from and a lot of relatable sad slinky feelings to dip in and out of here. All right that's our stack everyone that's what we're taking away with this. Again I feel like there's so many more books that I could have included in here but I didn't because I've talked about them already at length on my channel. 
Some that I would include are the Pisces, the new me, all of Sally Rooney's work. What else do we have? Jenny Slate book I love. I mean, this is really a comprehensive, not a comprehensive collection by any means, but I think this is a, a good start if you're trying to uh, lean into your sad girl summer a little bit more. What else would you add to this list? Let me know. I'm always looking for, you know, more books to check my confirmation biases and align perfectly with the way I'm already experiencing reality. <laughs> Just thought it'd be a fun little video. Let me know what other kind of videos you would like to see besides like wrap ups and vlogs and like these random tag videos. I'm interested to see what people like watching. I feel like I watch people's videos that are, you know, across that entire range. So it doesn't really matter to me. Hope this was fun to watch. Everyone go out there and get the rest of your sad girl summer. I'll see you around.